Okay guys, so today I am going to go over a question that a client, a friend asked about what he can take or do, um, and when I say take, I mean actually carry with him from his house uh, to the meet, I don't mean drug wise. Um, what he can take on meet day to make sure that he is prepared as possible for a meet. Uh, he's only done one meet before, so he's still fairly new to it, and he's just wanting to make sure that he's got everything that he might need. So I kind of went over uh, in my head some things that I think are important and some things that I've kind of picked up on and learned and done myself uh, over the years. And some of these are, you know, I really wished I'd have known about very soon. So um, some of these, I, you know, maybe you've thought about them, maybe you haven't. So let's go into it. Number one, first thing I can tell you to do, check your bags. Because everything that I'm going to talk about in here, if you don't check your fucking bag and take it with you, well, it doesn't matter, right? And I can't tell you how many times, uh, almost every time I'll go to a meet with, you know, two or three friends, one of us will always fucking forget something. Um, and it's usually something, you know, not really that big of a deal, but it's a pain in the ass on meet day to find somebody to go to the store to get it and stuff like that. So check your bags, check your bags, and then check your bags again before you leave. So with that being said, in your bag, Singlet, most fucking foremost. I know that shouldn't be said, but I can't tell you how many times I've went into a meeting, a rules meeting, and tell everyone that you have to have a singlet. And a lot of guys don't even know that you need to have a singlet. And then a lot of people, it's it's amazing how many forget it. Uh, it, it actually is commonplace enough to forget your singlet uh, that the SPF anyways, and I know the RPS does it every now and then too, and I believe I've seen it in the IPA as well. Um, a lot of these federations have actually started carrying just stock base uh, Enzer, you know, cheap $35 singlets. Um, that way, in case you forget it, they can make a penny off of you. Um, which, I mean, it's nice of them to even offer that because, I mean, they really could just kind of tell you to, you know, fuck off and go home. Um, next, shoes. Have to have shoes in most federations, okay? Uh, a lot of guys now, they've got a pair of squat shoes, they got a pair of bench shoes, and they got a pair of deadlift shoes or deadlift slippers, something along those lines, right? So don't fucking forget them. If you're one of these guys that's got three pairs of shoes to compete, make sure you bring all three pairs. Make sure you bring a pair of socks. Uh, some federations allow your knee sleeves to be pulled down over your big, uh, tall deadlift socks instead, uh, but a lot of federations still don't allow that, in which case you must have tall, long, baseball-style type of socks. Um, next, belt, wrist straps, elbow sleeves. I know you can't use them to bench, but take them with you anyways. Your elbow might be feeling funny, your bicep might be feeling funny. Go ahead and throw it on in compression during warm-ups, wear it through squats, wear it through deadlift. It might just save your bench. Um, same thing, knee sleeves, knee wraps. Bring the wraps that you've been training in. Don't buy a brand new pair of wraps and then decide to use that brand new pair of wraps on meat day. It will fuck you. Use what you used throughout the meat prep. Um, then from there, that's pretty much it for actual equipment, things that you need to actually wear and that you essentially have to have to be able to compete. A lot of this other stuff, you don't have to have it. You know, you can get away with it. And even things like wrist wraps, knee sleeves, things along those lines, you don't have to have them, but they're legal. You should use them in my opinion. So take them with you. Uh, some other things to put in the bag, ibuprofen, aspirin, uh, Mobic, naproxen, any kind of anti-inflammatory that you that you use, that you know you respond well to. Uh, it's one of those things you don't want to have to use it, but you know things happen in the squat. Uh, you you get kind of folded over, your lower back's now trashed, it's pissed off, it's agitated, uh, your hamstring, something along those lines. Take some ibuprofen. It's not going to fix it, but it might you know take a little bit of the pain away, alleviate some of that stiffness, and hopefully get you through to where you can get into a good setup on bench, uh, and then hopefully by deadlift it's you know subsided. Um, next, Imodium, okay? Uh, I actually picked this up from Josh Morris a couple years back. Uh, especially if it's your first meet, man, chances are you're going to be nervous. Your stomach is going to be tore up. Um, and the last thing you want to do is shit yourself on the platform. So <laughs> every meet, I always take Imodium first thing in the morning just to try and slow things down. Um, pickle juice. 
all right uh, you can also just take salt but i believe the pickle juice works even better faster with the vinegar uh, there are some studies on that i don't necessarily know the, the research behind it enough to try and sit here and talk about it and sound cool but i do know without a doubt if you are cramping you swig a, about a half a cup or or more of pickle juice which mind you a cup of pickle juice has got about five grams of sodium in it uh, so you know kind of take that into account when you do this but it will almost instantly knock out cramps and i'm talking some of the most vicious charlie horse cramps you've ever had so one of the biggest probably the biggest uh injury and, and i don't really necessarily want to call it an injury uh, but on meat day that slows guys down and takes pounds off the bar is cramping so salt pickle juice something along those lines very high sodium quick to absorb um, that's going to help knock some stuff out like that if you start to have that issue. Uh, another thing, if you can get it, floss, uh, the, like the band, uh, it's like a real stretchy band. I can't remember if there's an actual name for it other than banded floss. Um, but once again, for, you know, bicep tendonitis, uh, maybe your, your knee or something along those lines, just need some compression, try and get some active release work in it in between kind of, you know, in between temps and things along those lines. Uh, bands for warm-ups band pull-aparts hammer curls good mornings leg curls anything you might be able to do because a lot of times powerlifting meets are not held in a powerlifting gym a lot of times they're held just out in an auditorium or hotels uh, hotel lobbies and things along those lines and a lot of times there's not going to be a lot of equipment to warm up with other than a squat rack a bench and a deadlift platform um so which mind you great um but if pre-activation drills, things along those lines, we have seen that they help. We know they help. You do them before you train, so why would you not do them before you compete? So make sure you take the things you need to do that, whether it be bands, uh, rollers, uh, Theraguns, massagers, uh, car buffers, um, anything along those lines, you know, that you might be able to use for any type of stiffness, muscle, uh, aches, pains, dolls, stuff like that, uh, mobility, get moving, anything you're going to use. Uh, that you use there uh, and even if you don't use it at home take it fucking anyways because you might once again need it on meat day and it's better to have it than to have to go around and try and find it um chalk i always take a block of chalk with me to meets and i say that because uh it's amazing how many federations uh, and meets i've showed up and it's not just one federation multiple federations uh that i've been to the meets and they have just they brought one block of chalk for 60 lifters and you know technically that's probably enough chalk if you don't have a bunch of idiots using it but problem is with power lifting is that it's, it's filled with a bunch of idiots that use chalk and uh, one block doesn't usually make it throughout the meat so i always take my own just in case baby powder take it um like i said anything along those lines take it um alcohol don't know how you feel about it it's something that is in my bag once again it is a pain reliever it kind of pips me up makes me a little bit you know not as nervous uh so therefore i can perform a little bit better it's always in my gym bag on meat day not telling you to drink and compete if you do it's on you you get hurt it's on you alcohol is on the banned substance list uh, because it is a performance enhancer when used correctly so i've always got it um next that's really about all you can take with you um as for things you can do to set yourself up is actually going to start you know a few days out but it's just as important on meat day okay so after you weigh in you've got roughly 24 hours before the meat starts you may get a few more here and there if you're one of the bigger guys you know if meat starts at nine uh you're in the last flight well, you may be competing around 11 so you might get lucky and get 26 hours to rehydrate whereas everybody else gets 24 uh, or something along those lines if that makes sense so biggest thing hydrate 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 sodium fluid and carbs I don't give a fuck about protein. I don't care about fat. I hardly even eat really the day before and especially the day of. I don't eat much at all because I'm a nervous wreck, especially before squats. Uh, and I just, I don't like having a lot of food on my stomach. Uh, so me personally on meat day, I, I will wake up and I will usually do a breakfast uh, that is just some fruit. Um, maybe I will have a couple of boiled eggs or something like that with a little bit higher fat just to sit on my stomach, but it's very, very light meal. Um, 
I don't usually eat lunch, and if I do, we're talking half a peanut butter sandwich of some sort uh, kind of deal. Just as I get hungry, I usually won't eat anything other than that breakfast before squats, after squats. Like I said, might do a peanut butter sandwich of some sort, um, peanut butter, banana, honey. Then generally something around the same lines uh, for deadlift, may not eat at all. Uh, my thing, what I do is I focus on hydration more than anything and I get my calories through that as well. So depending on, you know, if I cut weight, things along those lines, I carry roughly a, usually a gallon uh, jug and I, I generally have two of them uh, for actual meat day. Day before I also generally do two of these. But it's a it's a gallon jug that I just I fill up with water. I then add roughly 200 grams of carbohydrates from powdered Gatorade. Um, which is essentially just straight dextrose and some flavoring, uh, sodium. I then load in about 200 grams of carbolin. Uh, not necessarily that you have to go with carbolin. It's, I like it. Uh, it definitely works. It is expensive. There are cheaper options. Uh, but once again, doesn't necessarily have to be carbolin, but that's what I use. Uh, so as I said, I get up to around 400 grams of carbs uh, in that shake or in that, that gallon jug. Uh, I also add roughly four grams of sodium to that on top of what might have come from the Gatorade as well. So it's probably sitting a little bit closer to um, maybe maybe four and a half, five grams of sodium per gallon. Um I also throw usually five grams of creatine in there, uh, about 10 grams of BCAAs. Uh, not necessarily even saying that those are even needed or that they do a damn thing, but it's something that I've done for a long time, and at this point it's just kind of a ritual. Uh, so I throw it in there. Um, also, at that point, you know, just going to throw it out there. If you're on drugs, you're going to be using drugs day of the meat as well. Um, and one of the things that I've seen a lot of guys do, including myself, um, is say you're on orals, whether, you know, D-ball, Anadrol, whatever the fuck it is, right? Uh, a lot of guys, they'll literally, you know, they'll take that same gallon jug. And if they're doing, you know, 50 milligrams of D-ball that day, then they're going to take a 50 milligram D-ball capsule. They'll split it and throw it down in the water and just kind of sip on it all day long. Don't know if it actually works. Makes sense why it would work. Um, know a lot of guys that do it. As I said, I've done it myself. Um, so once again, just a little bit more of an edge maybe. Um, so really that's the biggest thing is fluid, sodium, carbs. Don't worry about going out and eating a whole bunch of pizza, steak, and burgers, and ice cream. All that's going to do is fuck your stomach up, especially if you're not used to eating those things uh, and cause you to have diarrhea on the platform, uh, and which is where the Imodium kind of comes into hand. That's actually how I learned about it the first time. I, I did a water cut, and then as soon as I got off the scale, I was inexperienced, didn't know any better, and I do what 90% of power lifters do after they have cut 10, 20, 30 fucking pounds of water. Uh, I go to a pizza buffet or a pancake buffet of some sort and I load up on butter and pizza and all kinds of stuff. And then the next day, my stomach was fucked. I mean, I was, oh, it was horrible, 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 horrible. Um, but it's where the emodium come in and why it's stayed in ever since. Even, even though I don't do that stupid shit anymore, the emodium still stays in just to kind of, you know, help out. Um, I think that's really about it. Um, I hope that helps uh, a little bit with you guys. Uh, sorry the video was a little bit longer than I intended as usual. Um, but uh, if you got any other questions or anything that I may have missed, um, ah, one more, I'm sorry, I wrote it down and even forgot. Uh, this is something that you'll have to get day of. Uh, and you may have to send somebody to go get it if you don't have time or if there's not anywhere close. But ice. Okay, because once again, you might get some swelling here and there, elbows, things like that, and you might want it. But what ice is really, really good for, especially if you're loading up on the amount of sodium and fluid and everything that I'm talking about doing, is that a lot of times, guys, their fingers will get swollen. Uh, they'll actually get bloated in the fingers as well, and it'll really fucking destroy their grip for deadlifts. Um, and when you've got an abysmal <laughs> deadlift like I do, the last thing you want to do is make it even fucking worse, which I have done. Um, and the way that I got around that, uh, for further meets, uh, Sam Bird actually brought this. Um, I was having trouble uh, in the warm-ups holding the bar. Um, and, and I'm talking even like 405. Like my hands were just so squishy. Um, and I just told him I was just, it just, everything just felt heavier. You know, I was holding on to it fine, but it did not feel as secure as it normally did. And what we would do is we would alternate uh, hands in a bucket of ice 
trying to pull the swelling down out of them. And if they weren't in the ice, they were above my head trying to keep the swelling out of them. Uh, Brittany would also massage them here and there and kind of stuff like that. But the ice is the biggest trick there and it really is a cool trick before deadlifts. Um, so hopefully you made it to the end of this video to hear that because it's a really cool, really good tip that actually does work very, very well. Um, have a good day. Thank <laughs> you.